Hi, welcome to the channel Love Obstetrics and Gynecology. This video contains info related to the endometrial sampling by people without the requirement of anesthesia. Before starting with the procedure, I would first tell some indications and prerequisites. So this is a office procedure or an OPD procedure that can be done mainly in an infertile patient or AUB patient, abnormal uterine bleed patient with age more than 45 years or even a younger woman that has an unopposed estrogen exposure such as PCOS and obese patients and the postmenopausal women with endometrial thickness on TVS more than 4 mm. The procedure is done for the AUB patient with a regular pattern. We call them on the first day of menses and for the postmenopausal women, same day office visit, same first OPD visit she can be taken up for the procedure and for the infertile patient we want them to be in the premenstrual phase so that we can study the effect of progesterone on the endometrium for any procedure that is being done patient education and consent are the two most important prerequisites that should be fulfilled so now finally coming on to the procedure patient is asked to evacuate the bladder and then positioned in a lithotomy position and we conduct a bimanual pelvic examination to know the direction size and mobility of the uterus and adenexa is examined next we need instruments for the procedure first sponge holding forceps to clean the perineum and the vagina so this is a sponge holding forceps Next is a Sims posterior vaginal wall retractor. This is a cuscose by well self retaining speculum, and this one is vulcellum. Either we use Sims speculum with vulcellum or we can use cuscose speculum. Last you require is an endometrial sampling paper. So, this is a paper, it comes in a sterile packing and it's for the single use only, right? And now let's begin with the procedure. The patient is lying in the lithotomy position and we require is a sponge holding forceps to clean the patient. First clean the perineum and then move outwards and also clean the inside of the vagina and the cervix and after cleaning drape the patient. And then we repeat the Sims speculum retract to retract the posterior vaginal wall. So do not enter the speculum as such, go parallel to the vulva and the lateral vaginal wall and then rotate the speculum to depress the posterior vaginal wall. Now my step 2 will be to visualize the and hold the anterior lip of cervix. For this I require a vulcellum. Keep the concave part of the vulcellum towards the ceiling or towards the pubic bone and catch hold the cervix. So with the same speculum you require is a vulcellum, right? Or you can use the cuscose speculum instead. It has a benefit of being self-retaining. Again, if you have to insert this, keep it the blades parallel to the lateral wall and the vulva and go very gently inside the vagina then rotate the speculum and open the blades like this it will attract the interior and the posterior vaginal wall and with the help of this screw it is uh, it will get maintained at the level where you have opened and the interior and posterior vaginal wall will stay retracted so now after the os is visible the external os we require the pipal to take the endometrial sample. So this is a pipal made of plastic and it is flexible and it has graduated markings in centimeter till 12 centimeter. So we don't need a uterine sound as we can measure the uterocervical length with the same instrument. It has two parts, the cylindrical tube and a stillet. So we go through the vagina, cervix, the external os, cervical canal, internal os, all the way up till the fundus. Fundus is where you'll feel some resistance. At the external os, you can mark the uterocervical length, which in this case is 6 cm. So coming on to the parts of this pipil, uh, there is an outer tube and this is a stillet. So by pulling back the stillet, you can create a suction. The suction gets created in the cylindrical part of the this cylindrical transparent part of the tubing. So we go inside the uterine cavity, create the suction and pull back the plunger or stillet and hold on to that stillet so that the suction remains maintained. I will show the same on this model. See, uh, now we go through vagina cervix into the uterine cavity. 
now i am going to pull back on the stillet this is how the suction gets created now i am holding on to the stillet and then we move the pipil up and down like this along all the walls of the uterine cavity and rotating it simultaneously near the tip of the pipil we have a hole through which the contents will go inside the pipil and being transparent the outer tube we can see the pipil getting filled with the reddish pink content and we keep on creating some more suction and curating till we sufficiently have filled our pipil now without breaking the suction remove the pipil and have a firm hold over the place where the stillet and the outer tube meet so this transparent portion will be filled with the this transparent portion will be filled with the curatings and now you break the suction and push the stillet back inside and the content of the sample will come out through the tip of the pipil the same from where the curatings entered the pipil so this was all about the procedure post procedure bleeding is common in case it is excessive tranexamic acid can be prescribed patient usually does not require the antibiotics if the procedure is done in a sterile manner and yes the patient can be given analgesics if she requires so this was all about the endometrial aspiration if you like my video please do like subscribe and share the channel love obstetrics and gynecology thanks for watching